Well, these are the two knees that you saw me cut out of that giant piece of wood out at the sawmill uh, that was a trunk and a branch. And uh, I'd have to say that I've really never seen anybody do this other than myself to use a trunk and a branch. So this is a little bit rare. And uh, it's pretty nice. They look great. They're book matched. So the face of this one was alongside the face of this one. And, uh, you know, they don't match up absolutely perfectly because there's been a chainsaw cut taken out of them a little bit like that. But they have the same basic grain characteristics and the same, you know, characteristics and look of these medullary rays on the top, which is, by the way, spectacular, really. And uh, we had actually cut these knees out for the 23-footer that we we're going to build, but that's a little down the road. Not building the 23-footer, but kneading these knees in the 23-footer. So we decided we would put them in this boat right here because, you know, I mean, I could put straight grain knees in these, and I have for years, but this is a step above. It's absolutely gorgeous, and uh, we went through a tremendous amount of labor and time to obtain these things, really. I, it's way more than a boat like this really deserves, but it's beautiful, and... Uh, you can make them uh, very, very pretty. That was just planed with an electric plane, really, and uh, it came out nice and flat, but if you want them to look really nice and smooth, you have to be awful careful planing these with even a shop, like a number five bench plane or anything like that, because you could pick up the grain a little bit. Then you'd have to take a sixteenth of an inch off the whole surface to get rid of that imperfection that you've made. So we, we smooth them out with a scraper. Now, a scraper just works great. I don't think people realize how great they really are, but I'm going to scrape it, and I'm actually going to be pulling the scraper in this direction, but I'm going to hold it in that direction, so it's slightly biased to the direction I'm pulling it, and you can see, look at the stuff that comes off of it. Just great. Now, uh, basically, we're going to cut this side at 90 degrees because it's going to be 90 degrees to the side of the boat, kind of sloping up a hill a little bit like that so the water will run off of it. You wouldn't want to make it perfectly flat or level because it would just uh, not hold its finish quite as long. I scraped it a little bit because it looks way nicer to me while I'm working on it. That's basically the only reason i had done that. Now, I want to get it in place so I make sure that I meet the requirements here. We're going to have an in whale like that. We've got this knee sitting up on the top of the gunnels here, not the way it's going to be. It's going to be down two inches, you know, just even with the top of the shear plank and the gunnels. I want the knee to hang over the in whale right in this position right here. And I'm going to put a little rounded detail on it here where the in whale butts into it. And then the in whale actually goes underneath it as well and it's fastened up like that. So, you know, uh, it's going to look really nice. Uh, this is a very simple thing to do. I want it to hang over approximately a quarter inch, so I'm going to move it back a little bit here, like that. And that's pretty much exactly where it's going to be. So, if it's there, then what I want to do is put a vertical line off the planking right here, up to the top. And that's where I'm going to cut all of this excess right off. I just got to draw a line on there, and I'm going to pick it up and cut it in the bandsaw. A lot of people ask me about setting a bandsaw up like this, and I'm going to do a video on that later on, pretty much that would address any bandsaw, but uh, right now I just want to tell you that uh, I've got the blade on this saw strung pretty tight. It's only a half inch blade. It's four teeth to the inch, so it's made for ripping like this and doing woodwork like this. The other thing I want to say is that making a cut like this, you have to be pretty careful because, you know, it doesn't hurt you at all to go slow. And one thing you don't want to do is wander over the line. I mean, if you don't get close to the line, that's probably not the end of the world. You have a little lump to plane off. But if you plane, or if you cut over the line, you've got problems. Now you have to surface the whole thing down to that mistake. So go slow, be careful, and uh, there'll be no problem. I don't have to be as precise on the second cut because I'm still going to scribe it when I get it into position. Mm. 
Now I'm gonna put the knee up in position here and just see how it fits along here. I drew that line nice and straight and cut it straight, but I know the boat's got a tiny bit of a little curvature to it in there. So I'm just gonna see how it fits. And I anticipated having to touch it up a little tiny bit. So, you know, there it is. You can see the little tiny gap right in the middle of it right here. So I'll take a little bit off the knee up forward and maybe a little bit back aft. I'd have to plane that whole thing anyhow just to smooth the cut up. And uh, like I said before, it's 90 degrees to the planking, which sets the knee up on an angle. It's supposed to match this right here. So I'm gonna fit this first, clamp it in, then I'm gonna scribe this because this line may not be accurate and then recut it to bevel, which I'm just gonna pick up. I'll pick up the bevel using a bevel set underneath. One blade on the transom, one blade on the bottom of here, and then uh, I record that in degrees and set my bandsaw and then cut that. And then I'll have to fit that a little tiny bit, but uh, that's what you have to do. So let's tune it up a little bit. That. And I'm gonna reach over and get my plane. Do nice and sharp. I just wanted to point out that I haven't gone over to a woodworking bench and done this type of work right here. I'm doing it right on the boat. I'm using the boat as a woodworking bench. And it's all about saving time. I don't want to run around. I don't even want to take a step down from where I'm standing right now. I'm just fitting it and taking it off and clamping it right where I'm standing, doing a little bit of planing. And by the way, it's perfectly stable. This boat is as stable as any woodworking bench around the shop. Now I put it in place here and it looks pretty good, but uh, I smoothed up the cut on the knee and that looked nice, but it's got a little bit more material to come off over here before it really fits the way I'd like it to fit. So I'm gonna have to work on it a little bit more. Okay, so now I've got it fit back in position again, starting to look a little bit better. I've got a little tiny bit more work to do in this corner right here so that the knee will get down where it belongs and still bear against the plank in here. So I'm going to put it back in position to plane it again. Now that's really hard right there because that's a knot right there and uh, it's way harder than the rest of it. So your plane's gotta be awful sharp or you just slide over it without cutting, but that cuts it. That's the way to do that, just like that. Now, we just try it one more time. Now that fits right, right there. So what I'm going to do is just drive a couple of nails underneath it in a few spots just to hold it up so it'll just be easy to deal with and I'll be able to put a C-clamp on it without any problems because C-clamps aren't so easy to use in one hand so look at that, that makes it that easy. And it's resting on my nails here, it's nice and stable so now I can scribe it to the transom and I'm going to scribe it to the transom at this level, it has to be at this level. If this was to move up and down it wouldn't fit anymore. So that's where it's going to be, and I can take my dividers and just scratch a line right down there, like that. Now I'm going to reach underneath with a bevel set, and I'm going to lift the bevel between the transom and the knee so that I can set my bandsaw on that angle and make the after cut. I've had this bandsaw for like 40 years. I bought it at the North End Bargain Center in Jamestown and uh, it's been great. It's very stiff. I can tighten the blade up real tight what it really needs to be in order to cut something like this on a bandsaw this size. Now I'm going to lower my top guide here because I don't want it to be that high. It just makes the blade more stable. So I'm going to put it right about in there. That looks pretty good. Now, I'm all set up and ready to cut. One of the common problems that people have with bandsaws this size is really in the guide blocks. 
Some bandsaws are sold with like brass guides. Some of them are sold with barons. And some of them are sold with plastic guides. None of that do I like at all. The plastic guides wear out in no time. The brass guides do the same thing. And the wheels just howl at you when you're cutting. It's just awful. So I use steel. This is just T-stock, half inch square T-stock. And despite what everybody thinks, you can get this as tight to the blade as entirely possible. And as long as you don't pinch the blade, it doesn't heat up in a cut. It doesn't wear out. And another thing that's really nice about it, if it were to wear a little bit and you wanted to push them in and tighten them up a little bit, you can pull them out and turn them 90 degrees and put them back in so that the set screw doesn't fall in the same hole. You'd have a hard time adjusting them. These are the easiest ones to adjust. They're the best ones for cutting. They hold the blade straighter than any other system. Let's see what that looks like. Well, look at that. Pretty nice fit for the first time out. Real nice, as a matter of fact. I won't have to do a thing to that. Boy, that looks really, really nice on there. Real nice. Now I'm going to take my little square and make a mark 90 degrees to the transom. That's where I'm just going to lop it off right there. Then I'm going to take a paint pot top and make a little round mark around there without using a compass or, or a pair of dividers or anything. Just go right around there. Visually, this was the right size for the radius I was looking for on that corner. And then I'm going to cut most of the wood away from the line going around that radius. And the reason why I'm going to do that is that half inch blade will not cut that radius. And I'm not going to put a little skinny blade in my bandsaw to make it around there. So I just nib it off close to the line. And then because the blade is so tight, I'm able to make that cut real close. Most bandsaw blades would fall away from the line. But you can see how precise I can get with this blade being so tight. Well, it's another day in the shop, and there's a few things I wanted to show you. I've got these cordonies fit here in the skiff, and uh, they look pretty good. I'm going to show you some more about that, the grain of them and different things. I'm pretty proud of those things. Uh, but before I do, I want to show you these braces that I've got inside here. Now, the first one that you see there, the thicker one, I would just call that a brace that's pinched in place. Uh, it's not flexible. This one I would call a spring brace because you can see it's like a leaf spring. It's in there like a leaf spring. And uh, it's designed so that as you push this little piece along this way, it springs that straighter. So it's a springing uh, uh, mechanism and this one pushes. Now you can make spring braces that pull also. If you put it in straight and it was fastened on both ends, then you would do the same thing, pinch this up in there but you'd be bending it from straight into a curve, and then it would pull. So you can use this mechanism right here to push or pull. I think it's pretty interesting. I did it because I wanted to make the two corners be exact, exactly the same. They were within maybe an eighth of an inch or something like that, so I just wanted to make them exactly the same. Wouldn't even have to be, but uh, I think it's a good thing to do. So that's how you do it right there. Now I want to start showing you the grain in this quarter knee right here. Now I'm going to take some lacquer thinner and I'm going to give you an idea of what it's going to look like when we put some varnish on there. Now, doesn't that look beautiful? It's got that nice wet look. That is some of the prettiest wood I've ever seen and certainly the most beautiful quarter knee in any skiff I've ever seen. So it's really over and above what needs to be, but boy, does that look nice. Look at blend right into the railing. That is fantastic looking, just beyond belief. It makes me want to work with these knees like over and over again. I don't think I'll ever get tired of the look of that. I don't know who would. It's just gorgeous is what it is. Look at the features in this wood right here. You see the annual rings going along here. You see the medullary rays 90 degrees to the annual rings. And you see these curved lines right here. That's from compression because that's the bottom of the branch right there. That's why they're squiggled like that. This is the bottom of the branch under compression. That's kind of nature's version of compression bending right there. So, you know, it really looks fantastic. It's got those three features in one spot right there. 
oh man, under furniture or under a beautiful finish that is just going to stand out like you wouldn't believe. We call this tiger stripes. I think they call that tiger stripes in furniture, but I've always called it tiger stripes. Look at those right across. It's just spectacular looking. It really, really is. And it's cut very closely to parallel to the medullary rays. Anybody that would paint over that would be, have to be a little bit off, I think. And then right here, it's got this knot in the corner. You know, normally you don't see too many knots in my work, but that's a pretty one and it's in a nice spot right there. It looks great. The other side's got a little imperfection like that, but it's not quite as severe as that right there. I think that looks great, especially compared to this. This is so organized looking and this is kind of like on the crude side, so I just think it looks fantastic.